My name is Florian Kirschlager from University College London. I'm glad to see that you're interested in my talk about self-scattering of non-spherical dust grains. I will start to share my screen. I hope I can convince you in the next 12 minutes that non-spherical dust grains are very important for the interpretation of ALMA observations. ALMA has observed many protoplanetary disks and star forming regions in the last couple of years and detected different polarization structures and polarization fractions. In general, the polarization structures can be distinguished in two cases. The first one is that we have a parallel alignment of our vectors, and the second one is that we have an azimuthal alignment. Here, concentric rings, they could also be radial aligned. These two structures can be visible in this in the same disk at different wavelengths. For example, here HL tau at 870 micrometer shows a radial alignment, while at three millimeter on the right, the alignment shows uh, concentric circles. These structures are caused by different effects. The scattering on dust grains, the so-called self-scattering, produces the parallel alignment, while the azimuthal alignment is caused by intrinsic which means we have elongated dust grains which are aligned due to external forces, for example, radiation forces or magnetic fields. And they create these centric, uh, concentric circles of polarization vectors. In principle, these effects can explain the polarization structures, but there exist also several issues. Here you can see the disk HD 142527 at 870 micrometer, and uh, this disk shows both effects on this uh, at the same wavelength. Um, aligned grains alone can't explain the structure because uh, it can't explain the 90 degree flip which you see in the northeast. And uh, the second thing is um, that self scattering alone can't explain the structure because you would need also an azimuthal orientation in the southwest of the disk. This is also due to the polarization fractions and the south where you expect elongated grains, you have uh, fractions of up to 12%, uh, while in the north where you have um, very small polarization degrees of up to uh, 1%, uh, which is due to self-scattering. Another problem is that the dust grain sizes, which are derived from the self-scattering, are an order of magnitude below that which is derived from the spectral index method. For HL tau, we have here 150 micrometer from the self-scattering uh, scenario against one millimeter from the spectral index method. And the last problem is that we have an inconsistency in dust shapes. The aligned grains need non-spherical grains, otherwise we can't align anything. And the self-scattering is only for spherical dust grains so far. And this brings us directly to uh, the thing which we investigated. So we have know that thermal emission by elongated dust grains causes intrinsic polarization. And this thermal emission can then be scattered, but uh, the model by Akimaza Kataoka uses only spherical dust grains so far. And what we did is we focus on the question how we have non-spherical dust grains in the self-scattering regime. And uh, my colleague, Isa Bertrand and I published this study at the beginning of this year. When we want to investigate now the self scattering of non spherical grains, we take an oblate dust grain with a certain ratio of the axis and um, irradiate the dust grain. And we have to consider then two different scattering planes. The first one is perpendicular to the grain axis, and the second one is coplanar to the grain symmetry axis. Use these two um, scattering planes to investigate the self scattering effect. And um, we use the code DDSCAT by Bruce Jane, which is based on the discrete dipole approximation to calculate the optical properties of these grains. And we focus at the beginning on a wavelength of 870 micrometer. We investigated three different scenarios. The first one is that the incident radiation is unpolarized. And um, scenario two and three use uh, polarized and falling radiation perpendicular to the grain symmetry axis or parallel to the grain symmetry axis. We also vary the initial polarization fraction between 0 and 35%. Uh, 
um, these 35% are the maximum intrinsic polarization of elongated dust grains, which we found in a previous study, when the grain axis ratio is 1.5. Let's come to the results. Uh, on this slide and the following slides, I will show you the polarized phase function for the two scattering planes on the left perpendicular to the symmetry axis and right uh, coplanar to it. We start with spherical dust grains, which can be seen here as the dashed line. And when we increase now the axis ratio and go to elongated dust grains, we see a clear discrepancy between the phase function of elongated dust grains and um, spherical dust grains, at least for forward or backward scattering areas. The negative sign of the polarization in the right plot indicates that we have a 90 degree flip of the polarization direction here. This is for unpolarized radiation. When we go to infalling polarized, polarized infalling radiation, um, we start again with spherical dust grains. Uh, that's the dashed line and the black solid line is a uh, elongated line with axis ratio 1.5 but unpolarized and falling radiation and we increase now the polarization um, we see that the opposite trend that the scattered polarization is decreasing with increasing initial polarization the reason is that the polarization direction of the infalling wave here is perpendicular to the symmetry axis in case or so if the, when the infalling polarization direction is parallel to the symmetry axis, we would see even an increasing uh, scattering polarization. Here. And then we also focus on the circular polarization, which is zero for spherical grains because of symmetry reason. But uh, for the elongated grains, we see a circular polarization up to 6% and a change from left to right circular polarization at around 100 degrees. <clears throat> the results I've shown were for 100 micrometer sized grains, um, which are in the Rayleigh regime, where the maximum scattering polarization is around 100%. Uh, this situation changes when we increase our grain sizes to slightly larger grains, uh, for example, 150 micrometer, where the scattering polarization strongly drops. And uh, for circle grains, we see that the polarization goes down to 0 to 20%. Uh, uh, the exact value depends on the dust material and also on the grain size exponent. <clears throat> um, this is a very interesting value, the 100 or the value around 100 micrometer, because this is just the size which is inferred from the self scattering uh, scenario. So what we indeed uh, infer here is not the maximum dust grain size, but we indeed the transition region between ready and me region. So it's very questionable if these derived grain size of 100 or 150 micrometers at this wavelength is really the maximum grain size which is existing there. When we go to elongated dust grains, uh, the scenario changes, um, which can be seen here. Uh, in blue and red curve uh, is the polarization for the uh, elongated dust grains. For grains smaller than 100 micrometer, um, the, we see uh, similar behavior that we have a polarization of around 100%. But then the scattering polarization drops for larger grains, but not as, as strong as for the spherical grains. Um, depending on the scattering plane, we get uh, polarization values which are 20% above or below that of the spherical grains. And uh, the negative sign for the symmetry axis coplanar to the scattering plane means again that we have here just a um, uh, rotation of our polarization direction. So what we can see is that the non-spherical grains allow higher polarization degrees. And when we then finally go to our window function, which is defined as the albedo times the scattering polarization and which uh, really defines our self-scattering uh, scenario, um, that we see for the spherical grains in the center that we have a clear peak at certain wavelengths, and this uh, peak gives us then the maximum grain size, which can then be de which can then be derived. <clears throat> For elongated grains in the left and in the right, we see that the polarization, uh, that the window function for 
uh, larger grains is still much larger than zero. So uh, this has a result that also larger grains could be responsible for the signal which is observed. So this is a very important result that um, also larger grains are possible to explain the observed polarization when you <coughs> consider non spherical grains. Um, this brings me to my summary. We have seen that there exist uh, crucial differences between the uh, polarization of uh, non-spherical and spherical grains and that they have to be considered and that the window function times the, the window function uh, of albedo times uh, scattering polarization gives us much higher polarization degrees and that the larger and favorite and that the grain size can be larger than we think. I thank you for your time and I hope you enjoyed it.